Okay, what I'm looking at today is, uh, this is a Solar 15. I have installed the Solar 15 as a replacement for the EG4 18PK. The reason I changed it out was there was a failure in the 18PK and I was dissatisfied with uh, the distributor Signature Solar uh, in how they reacted to the failure. So I went ahead and bought the Solar. Solar's more expensive, uh, $1,600, $1,700 more than the EG4 18PK. Both of these things, the installation was about the same. It's not real complex. If you have some uh, electrical skills, you can probably do okay to replace or to install these things. But uh, I thought I'd just go over what the installation was and, and how it went. Uh, this one, uh, you know, it looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't. The wiring is, is fairly simple. You can hook up both uh, DC PV uh, units and microinverter units. I got quite a few microinverter units. I've got uh, 56 panels uh, microinverter units, which I can hook up to the generator terminals here. And then I've got about two and a half kW uh, of direct current PV uh, that go into it. Okay, there's, uh, there's two batteries here. You can just see the top of them. I use these uh, uh, trunks for the, on top of them. They come with the E4. You gotta pay extra for them, but they're, they're great for the wiring because you gotta do the wiring. You gotta have some place for all this wiring to go. So that's what the trunk's for. A total of 28.8 kilowatts, not usable, but 28.8 is what they start out as. Um, and the, this whole installation went pretty smooth. And I'd already put in the, the EG4, and this was pretty much the same. Uh, as the EG4 was. I did have to set it a little bit higher because the EG4 sat right on top here and so it makes it a little, little harder to view the uh, screen up there. But no big deal. Uh, most of the time if you're monitoring this you're going to monitor it on the phone or on your desktop. And that's, I should go over that a little bit. You can probably just barely see this. There's a dongle on the side of this. Okay, I had a heck of a time with the dongle on the EG4. It was just a monster. Uh, I tried two of them. I tried all kinds of crap to make it work. The one thing that the Solark came with, if you can see this little wire coming out of here, you don't have to use the dongle as a wireless device at least not on the solar. It has an adapter in there so that you can put your ethernet cable and if you look over here I've got the uh, uh, router. So uh, I just plugged it into the router. That eliminated having to make anything work through the internet and all the rest of the crap you have to go through for that. So I was very happy for that system. And it hooked up beautifully, uh, no problem. Now, I run this thing for a while, and uh, of what I found out. Okay, with 20 kW of solar, that maxes this thing out. Uh, it can only do about 15 k, which that's fine. It's okay. Usually, I'm not up to the full 20 uh, kW anyway, so. Uh, it isn't much of a problem. Uh, the unit is quiet. When the fan comes on, it uh, actually doesn't make a whole lot of noise, uh, which is no big deal either way. The programming for this thing, uh, 
you can program it right here. You can also program it off the phone or the uh, the uh, desktop. But I won't say it was perfect, but it was pretty easy to figure out. And I made I think a couple of calls to uh, Solark on it, and you know we got it figured out right off. No big deal. So. I've been operating this thing for several weeks now, probably, well, probably about a month. And uh, as I thought was going to happen, the two batteries are not enough. We're going to have to add more batteries. I'm uh, getting a bid right now on adding two more EG4 uh, batteries to this thing. Uh, Right now we've had uh, really overcast days and uh, overnight we ran down, ran flat on the batteries. So, and that's fairly calm. Uh, right now we're putting out about 2kW is going into the batteries and uh, we've got well, about 1kW is uh, going to the house. Uh, if this was wash day or if I was charging a car, uh, it would not keep up. But uh, it is producing some right now, not a whole lot. It's producing probably about 15 or 20 percent of what it could usually produce. Uh, I don't know if I'll get the batteries fully charged or not uh, today. Probably not. It's Super overcast today. It's raining. Actually, it's snowing a little bit. So uh, I want a little bit more storage on the batteries. So I'm going to put a couple more batteries in here, and we'll see how it works then. I'd always figured I was going to have to have more than two batteries, but I started out with two just to see how it's going to work. So I will be making more comments on this thing when we get the, the next batteries into it, and we'll be watching, you know, I'll be watching how it works. Couple little things about this whole installation was, I put a cement backer behind the, the batteries and the inverter. I've also got a fire alarm up there. It's maybe a bit overkill. I mean, this stuff can be outside. It's, it's rated for outside, but I put it in the garage. Uh, and I, it's just a little extra safety in case we had battery problems. These are iron phosphate batteries, uh, so there's very little chance of, uh, of fire. Uh, one of the things I look at really close is these terminals here. These are the battery terminals, and I come around here once in a while with one of these uh, thermometers, and I check the temperature of these terminals because those are the ones I'm concerned about overheating. I'm kind of an overheating nut, so I do uh, I do keep a pretty close eye on that. So. Uh, any questions you may have of me, go ahead and put them in the comments. Uh, if I miss something, let me know. I probably missed a lot of stuff. And uh, I will be updating this uh, when we get some more batteries. Or maybe, maybe before then, we'll see.